Do you want to know the truth about living in Spain? What? They felt threatened. Crazy. So they quit. Hola, everyone! Hola. It's been a little over a year since we have moved to Spain, and we hear a lot from you guys. You want to move to Spain, planning on moving to Spain, whether it's a month from now or five years from now. <laughs> so uh, we wanted to share some of our top experiences on what we wish we would have known before we moved to Spain. Yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, my name is Vicky, this is Josh. We moved here to Valencia, Spain from United States. So without further ado, let's get started. Winter is cold here. Yeah, guys, now this is coming from a Valencia perspective. Uh, some of the southern parts of Spain, not nearly as chilly, and you even have some parts of Spain where it is snowing. Yeah, but Valencia, as you know, it stays a pretty mild climate. It doesn't snow here, but still, inside of the house is really what is cold. It's freezing in here. When the houses are built, they're built with bricks about this thick uh, on the outside, and there's no insulation. So, you know, if you don't have double pane windows, um, which we had them installed in mm. our home, and we had heating installed in virtually every room of the house. Which is unusual. <laughs> very unusual. When we had our construction done and we wanted heating and air conditioning put in all the rooms, they were, they thought we were nuts. Yeah, they thought they were absolutely crazy. Um, we hear people think, oh yeah, I'm moving to Valencia. I don't need a winter coat. I don't need my fleece sweatpants. And they got rid of it all. And then they come here and they find out it's cold. One thing I say must, I love this. I have electronic blanket. So this one's only one side. So, cause I get usually super cold and Josh is hot. So, but this thing is must guys. So we bought from Amazon. It's a lifesaver. One of the key things you are going to see about a kitchen in Spain is going to be washer dryer combo. So these things have, of course it's all in Spanish, so you better uh, learn a little bit of Spanish here, but um, you have a, uh, your dryer is built in. So right now we have some uh, wet towels, which I love a towel out of the dryer. If you hang them outside here, they get a little crispy and crunchy like a potato chip instead of a fluffy white cloud. So we have a small space out here. Come out here, we have, this is where we hang our laundry. But again, when the weather's chilly, dryer helps tremendously. One major thing with Spain, especially right now, mm -hmm. are the electricity prices. Uh, we have set record after record after record every single day for the last, uh, I think about 10 days. Yeah. So we're talking over 300 euros per kilowatt hour right now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, last year during this time, it was around 40. I think our electricity bill came up what, 120 euro, something like that? 128. So it isn't cheap. $140 for the month. Right. So the good news is you're not gonna be doing that all year, obviously, right? There are many months that we don't use heating or air conditioning, but during the winter time, it can get pricey. Noise in Spain. It's noisy here, guys. It's noisy in the terraza and out, um, the restaurants or dogs barking our neighbors walking on the stairs. You can hear them very clearly. Noise everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Spaniards, they live to talk over one another. So <laughs> it's very loud, and I'm a loud talker, okay? Yes. Um, so I, I kind of fit in. And also, since we talked about how thin the walls are yeah. in the apartments, not much of a soundproofing. No, there's no nope. soundproofing. And as you know, the Spaniards have a late nightlife. So if they have a house party or something else, and, and even if you have a restaurant like outside of your uh, balcony, then you'll hear them all night. Cause like it, it, it'll, it'll go on until like 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. and who knows how long. Yeah, so yeah. be aware of that when you do come here and you buy or you rent um, is the housing might be beautiful where you are, mm -hmm. um, but then you'll look down from your uh, patio or your balcony if you have one, and you're going to see the terrazas, which may look really peaceful when you're yeah. there with the realtor <laughs> at two o'clock in the afternoon or one o'clock in the afternoon when no one's eating. No, you have eating. to see the night. <laughs> uh, wait until nighttime and look again because it's probably going to be loud. There's probably going to be a lot of booze, and there's probably going to be a lot of smoking. And at a certain level, you kind of have to live with the nose. It's impossible to cut everything off, but just 
keep that in mind and and also the if you happen to have a neighbors right the neighbors are very important really loud neighbors or the neighbor has a dog is barking regardless you'll hear some sort of noise speaking of neighbors there are okupas aka squatters it is a big issue here in spain guys so something that you need to be aware of uh we have our own experience that we share in a minute but basically the people will break into your home while you're not home like while you're away uh, on vacation or whatever else is and they're basically gonna claim your home to be their home you have 48 hours if they're not out in 48 hours then surprise uh, someone else has now taken over your home and you can't get them out um, we've heard a lot of tricks that they use like putting a little string between your door and mm. the uh, the framing of the door on the outside. And if that door op doesn't open for a couple days, they'll come back and check it. They're, they're gonna they're gonna try to get into your house. Speaking of that, let's share our own experience because we have our share of a nightmare from that. Luckily, uh, our home wasn't broken into. It was our neighbor upstairs. But I don't know if you guys know, but we purchased a property here while we're living in the United States and we were also remodeling remotely with our help of our project manager. Uh, one day we woke up in the morning, we got a phone call. The upstairs neighbor was really mad that there was a lot of noise and yeah. they came actually threaten our workers that if they don't stop making noises, they will do something really horrible. Our worker felt threatened to their lives, so they quit. Quit. Um, all of this happened while we're living in the United States. So as you can imagine, we were panicking. Oh my God, we have a crazy neighbor upstairs. I were too dangerous. We bought a wrong property. So we went through a hell. A hell. Couple months down the road, we found out those guys were actually Ogubas. What? No one told us. No, nobody, nobody told us. We, we just thought we purchased the property with the bad neighbors that we were really freaked out about. A couple months later, they were gone. After listening to blaring music, dog clicking, everything a bad Trash neighbor, throwing. <laughs> everything a bad neighbor could do, uh, was done. So the when we spoke to the actual owner of the property, it took him two years, two years of a battle to get them out legally. And he showed us actually his property picture. It was absolutely destroyed, guys. Trashed. Trashed. So this is not to scare you away from moving to Spain. Obviously, it can be prevented, right? So that's why we recommend the good security system. Um, if you are the person who are away from home for a long time. Bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Oh, such a great pastime here in Spain. Gotta love it here. <laughs> okay, so you're going to find your bureaucracy starts as soon as you start applying for your visa. Now, we have experience just in the Los Angeles mm -hmm. consulate, so I know there are other consulates around the country. Um, I think Miami doesn't require appointment, yeah. so it's much easier to get back in there. But in a place like Los Angeles, especially for us, we were living in Denver, yeah. guys, so we had to fly to LA to go, go to the consulate, drop off paperwork, mm -hmm. we were there for 10 minutes, fly back, fly back to pick up our visas, fly back. When you land in Spain, guys, get the process going ASAP, okay? You're gonna need a lot of documents, you have to make a lot of appointments, appointments are hard to get, mm -hmm. you have to log on to some antiquated uh, archeological found system uh, <laughs> to try to make appointments that uh, makes no sense. Your, your, your head's going to explode with the steps you have to take. It isn't easy. Yeah, it's not easy. There's also some services here that can help you with that stuff too. So that leads up to our last point, you gotta be patient. We came here to enjoy the quality of life. So things take a little long, especially with bureaucracy and a lot of manana culture and different things. Kind of have to be really patient and adapt the way that Spaniards do rather than US or any other country that you're from. Most things will not make sense to a person from the US who only thinks about how the system can be improved so we can make more money and cut more time and it doesn't work that way here <laughs> yeah it's it's not about that it's not about making a lunch service faster it's about taking the two hour lunch you have to get used to just slowing down and saying it is what it is or as the spaniards would say tranquilo tranquilo <laughs> <laughs>
Listen guys, this video is not to be negative at all. If you have seen our other videos, we love living here. But we think knowing some of these things will help set the right expectations for you. Life in Valencia has quality. It lets you focus on what really matters in life. We hope you enjoy Spain as much as we do. So that's it for today, guys. If you haven't, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, it helps us a lot. And let us know what you think about it. Until we see you next time. Adios. Adios.